back to the show. Stop doing that. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Melissa here with Steadfast Farm. Ryan is here also, right there. He's going to be majorly involved in the filming today, despite not wanting to be. So this was going to be my sourdough video, but I'm having to redo my sourdough video. And in case uh, you recall and you saw the video about a year ago, we had some trouble with our cistern and we patched it. Well, that patch has failed and I will show that to you in a bit. Uh, failed enough that it's not patchable anymore. And so it's still middle of winter here. Trenching is not an option right now. And... Uh, Hopefully we can kind of stave off trenching for another year and we'll actually get the well trenched to the house. But right now we are doing a temporary solution and I thought maybe this would help somebody else. This video is going to be how to install basically a cistern in your house. It's just a, a slip tank, it's 150 gallons and I'll get Ryan to go over what we've purchased and then show you the install. Let's go. So why don't you tell everybody the supplies that we have? Got a uh, 150 gallon vertical tank uh, that will be able to fit down into the basement. Yeah, it's pretty hard to find something that will fit through standard doorways to get down there. And certainly not ideal, but it will keep it going and it'll be the simplest fix and cheapest at the moment. So we got the tank. And I may be going a little bit overkill, but I'm going to do it anyway. I picked up a uh, just a check valve. So I don't want water basically siphoning back into the tank and causing the pump to lose prime. So this should be a, just a bit of insurance against that happening, uh, but pretty simple. Tank, have a uh, valve, the check valve will go in here as well. And then a barb fitting to a length of hose that's gonna go directly to the pump. All right, well, let's get this thing put together. And for anybody like me, uh, what is that spool of white stuff? This is Teflon thread sealant tape. And it is used for? Sealing threads so they don't leak. <laughs> sealing pipe threads specifically. Pretty sure that was self-explanatory, but okay. <laughs> Only poly. Uh, this is used on like poly stuff, right? Not on... Uh, you can use it on metal as well. Oh, see? Good things to know. I wouldn't have known that. Now, I do have, unfortunately, like I said, living in a small town, uh, we're not, we're an hour away from a large big box store. I, doing some plumbing in the past, I would prefer to use all the same materials all the way through, but that's just not an option. You use what you can get, what you can get. So we got different, different types of materials here. We're even brass, which I don't like going plastic to brass, but again, this is going to be high pressure and... You work with what you can get out in a small town. You need to hold that? Possibly. It doesn't want to go in easy, right? Well, we got the tank fitting here that's spinning. So we got to hold one and do the other. And I'm not working with the biggest pipe wrenches. I don't have to do a lot of heavy plumbing. So <laughs> we'll see if I can even get this onto the tank fitting. You need to hold it. Hold that. The wind doesn't help with that tape, eh? Hey? 
And that's the check valve, right? Yeah. And to explain, a check valve only allows water to flow one way. Um, if it was me, I would get it going the wrong way. Can you be able to tell the viewers how to tell it's going the right way? If I see it. This would be very technical. Oh, right here. Nope, right here. Oh. Oh, look at that. See, I wouldn't have known that. I had to put it on backwards. So this allows water to go out, in this case, and not in. Ah, huh. see? I wouldn't have known that. Mm -hmm. I had to put it on backwards and you know it. And if you weren't doing the check valve, you that piece would just go here, right? Yep. see an issue we may end up having and I may end up having to change things out when you're using two different types of materials like these you think plastics plastic but it's they def definitely have different consistencies and the different thread types will work against each other here so this threads in really really easily even though I put three wraps or three layers around of thread sealant tape. I basically did that by hand. So <laughs> I'm hoping it's not gonna leak, but you know, usually you wanna have some real friction there to get things to seal properly. And when you're using two different types of materials, that doesn't always happen. You've literally got one type here, you got metal, you got a different type for this nip, uh, this plastic nipple in here, another type here for the PVC ball valve, and then yet another type here. Yes, they're all similar, but they're all different brands, different makes. So the threads are different between every last one of these fittings. And the ball, the ball valve is, again, just another check to make sure that if there's something wrong, there's no water freely flowing. And Well, you know, if, if something, the hose, something happens with the hose, the barb fails or the, you know, you can turn it off and you're not draining all your water into the basement. Um, so that's all really that is. And our existing system and had a ball valve coming up out of the floor from the cistern but it was uh, you know basically rusted out and seized so we couldn't even turn that water off at any time really all that there is to it you're going to have your hose on this end going to the hose in uh, the jet pump in the basement and that's all you should really need um, it's just gonna be a matter of again whether these will actually stay and not leak because of all the dissimilar fittings that we're using on this like I said, it's, it's a, it took me, what, five minutes to throw this together. Um, if for whatever reason there's leaking because of that, it's, I can replace this stuff in no time and get it working again. If it's a minor leak, we have a drain right beside this. Um, yeah. It's not the end of the world. It'll at least allow us running water here. Let's see if I can even get this up. Oh, all right, well, hold on. Okay. I don't even know if we can see. Right down there. 
hear all that just pissing back in. It's not spraying as hard as usual because there's a big chunk of ice on it, but we interrupt this program for our contest announcement. We are still running a contest. We are looking to get to 500 subscribers. At 500 subscribers, the contest is closed. If you're viewing this and there's more than 500 subscribers, your comment does not count as an entry. You may enter on BitChute, Rumble, or YouTube, whichever platform you're seeing this on, or you can enter on all three. All you do is subscribe to our channel. I will check. Subscribe to our channel. And I forget the rest. I always do. Subscribe to our channel and comment down below on any video that says, hey, there's a contest going on in here. Once you reach 500 subscribers and I close the contest, I will go through all of the comments on all eligible videos and I will write down names, put them in a hat and flippy floppy, drippy droppy, and I will draw them. And, um, and then you, you, yes, you, you, I'm pointing my mitt at you, could win a Steadfast Farm branded t-shirt and who doesn't love branded t-shirts? I know I do. Thanks so much. Back to the show. Stop. I do this. Why do I do this? Okay. So our current setup. So current setup, if you look down here, you have a line that comes through the cement floor that's going down out to a concrete cistern that's buried underground behind the house. And as I believe was shown earlier, the pipe, the inlet pipe that's on inside this, the cement cistern is broken off. It's a galvanized fitting they have coming through the cement wall. It's broken off right at the wall. No way to really repair that or patch it without digging out everything and redoing it. And I honestly don't want that cistern uh, set up in place anymore since we have the well we just need to have a trench to the house at some point so we're eliminating that completely right now until we can get the trenching done so this just needs to be disconnected from the jet pump and then simply connect a new hose from the jet pump over to our temporary tank in the basement that we'll have to fill up on a regular basis unfortunately but it's a sacrifice that's Pretty fine. simple. It's the cheapest and by far easiest fix for dealing with winter right now. And completely viable. And it's completely viable. It's, it's a little more work having to fill up that tank on a regular basis, but we can run a hose directly from our well, which is not even 100 feet away, right through to this tank through that open window and fill up the tank as often as we need it. Yes, we have to deal with freezing hoses. Um, generally speaking, though, if we are running it for... 15, 20 minutes in order to get this tank filled up, we really shouldn't have to worry about it freezing and we can empty that hose out and bring it in somewhere that's warm. So it's not the best setup in the world, but it'll work. It's and perfect. it's definitely the best option for right now. We're gonna have to replace that one for This might have to be cut off. This feels like a great moment to remind all of our viewers to please practice safety, use the correct equipment for the right job, and make sure that you have all proper equipment in order to keep yourself safe available to you at all times. You might have to be doing this with, but... I don't want to move, eh? There's a, a lot of corrosion on here. You might be going back again. <laughs> no water pouring, that's good anyway. There you hear it. Okay. When I get this peeled off, okay. just in case there's a lot of water that's coming, Got the other bucket down here. Just turn it. Turn it and get it directed in there. <laughs> See if we can jam this down. No, it's it is what it is. It's yeah. <laughs> oh, this is water from the. Well, that was better than me. Okay, so now we just gotta. This is done. We're finished with this. Reuse these clamps. They're a 
basically new. We can get that out of the way later, but for now, we just got to get our new piece of pipe measured up and attached to both ends. Should we discuss the black pipe? No. <laughs> Ryan doesn't want to discuss the black pipe. So, as Ryan was saying in the video, you've got to watch these different plastics because the different plastics sometimes measure differently and they don't fit perfectly. Well, he said he had a feeling, and so... He decided to check with that one inch drain pipe that we had, drain pipe, suction pipe, mm -hmm. empty pipe. Well, that, that white stuff, he decided to check before we got this thing in here and sure enough, it did not fit on this. So he had to go all the way back to the shop. Okay, do you need the heat gun? Yeah, I wanna get this, this pipe because it's a little, a little. Oh. Just go along here. On high or low? High. Get the inside of it. Melting. You want me to hit it with the heat again, or? No. Where am I holding it here? Oh, this is gonna suck. So this hose is way longer than I need it to be. I just gotta find my join here. Oh, there it is. Alright, let's see if we can pop it off. Oh, I'm wet. I can go turn on now? Yep. Okay. So far we're at like one minute almost. 45 seconds. One minute. Okay, we put about 60 gallons in the tank and no leaks it um, flowed down the pipe and primed the pump so we should be good to go and i guess we'll test it out and see if it works or not Holding. I'm gonna go open a valve up top. This is the prime cap. Can I turn it back on? There we go. Now she's moving.
side edge guys, I'm sorry, but and it'll come down a bit when it hits there, I think. It should automatically click off. It went up. I left the top right. There it is going. Got lots of air in the line. It's gonna run different than we're used to, I think. There we go. Okay, I'll go turn that tub off here. That's fine. Now it should kick back on if it gets to 40, but he's gonna turn that water off ahead of time, hopefully. This is gonna run a little differently than we're used to because we're used to we're used to the sound of it, right? We used to know we used to know how empty the cistern was based on the sound. Okay, we have a little leak right here. Right here. Yeah, unfortunately not entirely unexpected. But if that's what all we're dealing with and I'm fairly happy <laughs> yeah for sure would it help if we turned it a bit more or not that we could you now 60 gallons on it so we have been using the new cistern i guess you could say in the house for a little over a week or about a week or almost a week close to a week a weekish, and it's been great it's been absolutely wonderful i have determined that our cistern has been kind of, or our system has been struggling for a while. Our pump runs differently than it has for a very long time. It um, used to turn on right away as soon as you would turn on a faucet or something because it would just, it would peak up to 50 or 60 and hold its pressure at 40. Um, whereas now it peaks up to 60, holds its pressure at 60. So there is a very, very, very tiny one drip leak that comes from the tank uh, right where the hose starts to connect. And it's just got a yogurt cup underneath it. And frankly, I haven't even had to empty it. It just drips in there and dries up. So um, it wouldn't do any damage. But I'm just going to leave the old yogurt cup underneath there. So um, it's been working great. We have already emptied it twice i'm going to fill it up today so that is going to be a bit of a bother because my high efficiency washer i don't know what high efficiency washing is uses 40 gallons 40 gallons of water per load um so <laughs> so i like you can see how laundry day is just gonna suck that tank clean so we might have to look into trenching it this year or we'll put in another tank i think we'll be able to get the metal diesel tank out of the basement finally and get a secondary tank in there i think that would really give us a cushion in the winter right now or well not right now but like in the coming spring it's really not that bad it's not a big deal you just pop the window open whatever right um but yes it's worked out pretty good I think that's going to do it for this video today, guys. Uh, if you haven't already liked and subscribed to our channel, please do so if you think it's something that you will like and would like to subscribe to. Maybe even consider hitting the notification bell. And tuning in for the other videos that I have upcoming. I am working on a sourdough video, a lazy man sourdough video. Everybody knows me by now. And a seed video. And then I'm going to do a couple videos where I review a few things that I use on my daily life on the farm. And um, they deserve they deserve some props because I'm pretty hard on stuff. <laughs> really hard on stuff. So thank you. Thank you so much again for being here today. I really hope this helped somebody. And I really hope that you stay safe and be well in this crazy, crazy world. Have a good one. We'll see you on the next video. I don't need to... Again, what is this? Bye!